Hi, I'm David, your developer on duty, and in this video, we're going to improve tree sitter based syntax highlighting. So, first of all, modern syntax highlighting is great. It makes our programming experience a lot more pleasant and visually appealing. Nobody likes to stare at white text on a black background. Syntax highlighting helps us to, in our mind, parse the code, find the important bits, see potential errors, and analyze the structure of the program. It gives us a good intuition about the underlying abstract syntax tree. But in my opinion, syntax highlighting focuses a bit too much on the structure and not on the actual semantics of the program. I mean, it depends on your current task, but often you need to keep track of the flow of some variables, so the name of them is important. And you have to quickly find the locations where they are used. And here's the catch. The same variable can have multiple visual representations depending on the location of it. Consider the following example. So in this example, you have a function myFunk, which has a parameter myParam, which appears as an input parameter as well as in the function body. As an input parameter, it's yellow. In the function body, it's white. But it's the same thing. Why is it represented differently? So of course, for such simple functions, it doesn't really matter so much if it's represented differently, but consider this more complicated example here, where you have a function with many different input parameters. Solely based on the color, you don't know where the variables are used, where they flow through your program. You have to visually scan and read the whole document to understand it. In graphic design, there's a principle called the repetition principle. It basically means that pictorial elements are completely or partially reused to achieve not only consistency, but also uniqueness. The viewer must immediately notice that it's the same element. So we can apply this principle in how we do syntax highlighting. So in our simple example, this would be changed to this. So you can see my param has the same color in both locations because it's the same thing, repetition. In the more complicated example, this will become this. You can see that the structure might not be as visible as before, but it's easier to track the variables and you can be assured that identifiers with the same name have the same color. So you're faster scanning the document. So I created a NeoVim plugin called Market or MarkID which sits on top of your tree sitter based syntax highlighter and makes sure that the same identifiers have the same color. It's of course free and open source, so feel free to use it or fork it. And in the following, I'm gonna show you how I implemented this plugin using Lua and tree sitter. So let's check out the project market and you can see it doesn't have many files. It's basically all in one Lua file called Lua market.lua. And here I have already enabled this plugin, so showing you the code of the plugin is at the same time a demo of the final result of this plugin. So the whole plugin is about 100 lines, but let's fold it, uh, otherwise we can see the woods for the trees. So when writing Lua plugins, it's kind of common to have this local table called M, which stands for your module, which you then later return. And usually those modules, they have an init function. Now you can either let your users call this init function manually, or you can just create a file called plugin, then the name of your plugin, in this case, market.vim. And in there, you just require market and run init automatically. Now, the basic idea is to sit on top of tree setter, which is used for usual syntax highlighting. So we can define a tree setter module and then users can enable that module through the tree setter configuration. Now the configuration looks like this. So they usually have to write require nvim tree setter configs.setup. That's what they usually do for syntax highlighting. But then they can also enable this custom plugin, which we're going to write by writing uh, market enable true. So back to our code. The first thing we need to have is nvim tree setter as a module. And then we can use TS define modules. And then we have to provide a table with uh, the name of our plugin, which is called market. And here we can define a few functions which are called automatically. These functions are attach, detach, 
and is supported. We can also provide some additional configuration which the user can then change. So the most important function is attach and this function is run whenever treesetter attaches to a buffer and we get not only the uh, number of the buffer but also the language um, which we are trying to pass here. So what's the basic idea here? From treesitter we get an abstract syntax tree and based on that we have to find the identifiers which we want to colorize. Now with treesitter you can define queries to extract nodes from the abstract syntax tree and to help you with that there's a nice plugin called TS Playground. So if we run TS Playground toggle you can see the abstract syntax tree of the current document and you can hover over various elements and then on the left you can see that the elements in your source code are highlighted. This is pretty handy. Now you can try out some queries by pressing O and now here in this other window you can um, edit some queries and run them. So in this case we are interested in identifiers so you write um, identifier and we want to name it uh, mark it. Now if you hover over these uh, captures here you can see that in your source code all identifiers are highlighted and this is exactly what, what we want to have. So in this case the function parameters are identifiers, the uh, local variables are identifiers, the function calls are identifiers and so on and so forth. So all these we want to recolorize. So let's get out of there. And you can see that uh, we need to define a query. And I created a few queries uh, here for um, a few languages. And the default query should be the one we just saw, identifier and market as the capture. Now in JavaScript it's slightly different, so we also have here an identifier, but it can also be a property identifier or a shorthand property identifier pattern. And uh, these three we need to match all those identifiers, but usually most languages like for example also Lua have this identifier um, which we can use to query the nodes. And whenever you encounter things which probably should be configurable, you should also expose it to your users. So in this case we set it uh, to the module with the property uh, queries and we expose all those languages, also TypeScript, so the users can change those queries and so on and so forth. Now when I run uh, define modules I told you before that um, it's also possible to um, add these additional configuration options and one of them I call queries which is just a pointer to the queries of the modules which we just uh, defined and the good thing about that is that in your attached function you can just write uh, local config equals to configs.getModule market and then you get this user configuration so then you can for example access config.queries, which the user might have changed. So what do we do now? We take our configuration from the user and access the queries property and we see if we have a specialized query for this language. Uh, if not, we go and use our default query. And then we can use the function vim treesetter pass query to pass that query. In addition to that, we also need the parsers. So from require and vim treesetter parsers, we get all parsers. And for that particular language, we can get the correct parser also for the same buffer. Then we just write parser.parse to get the tree for which we can extract the root node of that tree. Now let's just assume I already find a function called highlight tree. Uh, then we just have to call this function um, first when it's attached, but also when the buffer changes. So for the changes of the buffer, there's a um, 
possibility to register callbacks on the parser. And there's this uh, callback called onChangeTree, which is run when the buffer is changed. So what I do is um, whenever the buffer is changed, I run this highlight tree function again. So once during bootstrap, and then later on when something changed. So now the question is, how do I highlight that tree? So this is this uh, function here. And uh, first I define some kind of namespace. Uh, the namespace is done using Vim API and Vim create namespace market that allows me to also you know, clear previous highlights. Then I have to find the captures of the abstract syntax tree for my query. So I can just write query, iterate over my captures. I provide the, the root node and the buffer number and the start and the end. And then I uh, get my identifier and the node based on that query and um, I can check that the name, th this is the, the name of the capture. Then I can check if the name is mark ID. And if yes, then I can get the text of that node. So this will be basically the name of the identifier. And if I found a text, then I have to highlight it based on some mechanism, so to say. So I have here this, uh, this map highlight group of identifier where I cache all those highlight groups which I'm going to create for each identifier name. So let's just assume for now that there is some kind of fancy mechanism to determine the right color. Uh, once I have that, I can use the function vim highlight create to create a highlight group. And with that highlight group, I can specify some properties. For example, I can set GUI FG, that stands for GUI foreground. So I can specify the foreground color to some uh, specific value. And then I can save this group name in my cache highlight group of identifiers. Now the question is, how do you pick the right color for this identifier? And uh, the first thing you need to have is a set of colors which, we want, which you want to use. So I defined in my module the property colors, which contains uh, three tables of values, dark, bright, or medium, which the user can then choose. And in the user configuration of this TreeSitter module, he then can set the colors table. And it's defaulted to M colors medium. So now that we have a table of colors, how do we map an identifier name to a particular color? And there are different ways how to do it. One way would be, for example, to um, check in a cache if I have already assigned a color to some identifier. If yes, I'll take that. If not, I just take the next number in a round robin fashion. But this has the big disadvantage that identifiers of different files probably have also different colors. And that's usually not what we want. We would like to have some um, global stability that the same identifier in file A will have the same color also in file B. Stable colors is actually not quite hard. Um, first, you map a text to an integer, to any integer, can be a, a big number. Then you take modulo the length of the available colors you have, plus one because uh, Lua is uh, one indexed. And then you get an index which is stable for that text, right? And then you can uh, generate a group, group name based on that index, create the uh, Vim highlight group and save it in your cache. So that's uh, super, super simple. And you only do that if um, you you don't you haven't already done that for that particular text. Now the question is how do you map a string to an integer? I have here defined this uh, this helper function, which is actually quite simple. So if the string is nil, then you return zero. Um, else you create a local variable integer, 
and then you loop over the characters of this uh, string and then you perform this uh, function string byte which gives you um, the, the, the byte number of this uh, character and you just add it to the integer and in the end return the integer integer so that maps any string to an integer in a stable way now once we have done that we can continue so now we have our highlight group and we can use node range to get the start row start column end row and end column for the node where we found the identifier um, I can combine them to range start and range end and then I just have to call vim highlight range where I give the buff number the namespace which is global for this whole uh, plugin then the highlight highlight group of the identifier and uh, where I want this highlight to be applied and that's basically the whole code I mean there are also a few functions which are defined, for example, detach. So when detach is called, I just clear my uh, namespace for that buffer. And the other function, which is quite important, it's called is supported. Um, you don't want to enable this kind of um, highlighting for all languages because maybe they don't have identifiers and that would cause a runtime exception. So there's a, a nice trick we can use to check if the language is supported. First we get the, um, the, the queries and uh, we call vim treesitter pass query with a query for this particular language. And in case uh, the query is not suited for that language, it will cause a runtime exception. But we can uh, catch this runtime exception using this Lua function pcall and if it doesn't throw it will return true and if it would throw it will return false. So we can basically use that to check if the language supports our query or not. And that's all there is. If you have any questions or suggestions please feel free to post them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and stay tuned.